You know, the Bible tells us that if you have fear and you're unbelieving that you could end up with a lake of fire. Did you know that? That's in the Bible. It's Revelation 21 and verse 8. The unbelieving and the fearful, along with murderers and sorcerers and whoremongers and liars, all liars, will have their part in the lake of fire. You mean that people who are fearful are in the same category as liars and murderers? So what the Bible tells us, now I'm going to share with you today on this short program, I'm going to share with you today what you can do to build up the kind of faith you need so that you don't have to get coronaviruses or flus or pestilences. There are more pestilences coming. In Matthew 24, Jesus talks about, they ask a question, what will be the sign of the time of, the, uh, of your coming and the end of the age? He said there's going to be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Oh, yeah. Uh, are we seeing a harbinger of things to come? Are we experiencing now the uh, so-called birth pangs before the great tribulation comes and the second coming of Christ? Are we that generation that will see the second coming of Jesus? Well, I'm not setting dates, and I actually don't know the answer to that question, but I'll tell you one thing. You and I had better pay attention to what's going on. We had better pay attention. I'm Keith Slough from Ambassador Christian College. I've got an article here I'd like to send you. It's on faith and healing. Now, we have a Bible college in Kannapolis, and our students learn the Bible better than the average four-year seminary graduate learns in four years because they study Luther and Calvin and Wesley and Zwingli and John Huss and Charles Haddon Spurgeon and what did Dwight L. Moody say, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and how did Billy Sunday preach and so on. We don't even touch on those things. What we preach is, or what we teach, is Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, and so on. It's the Bible. And in the first year, their only textbook is the King James Bible, and that's it. And this article here is part of our systematic theology course, and it's about faith and healing. Now, why have a course, why have a, a, a an issue, why have a lesson, I should say, on that particular subject in our systematic theology course? All seminaries and Bible colleges have a systematic theology course. Why should we have one on faith? Because Hebrews eleven six says, without faith you cannot please God. And so we have this article. Now, I'd like to send it to you absolutely free, no request for money. And it won't even cost you a stamp. You pick up the telephone and call me. Our Bible college is, is in Kannapolis, and this is something we would like to share. There is no cost, and we don't give your name to anybody else. Now, here's the telephone number if you've got a pencil handy, and I'll give it to you again at the close of the program, but you can go ahead and, and uh, start calling as soon as you want to. The, the number is 704-938-6415. Just ask for the one on faith and healing. People are, are getting sick from these horrible pestilences and dying. It's horrible. Coronavirus is just one of many that are yet to come. And then, as a result of this, there's going to be food shortages. That's right, food shortages. It's prophesied in the Bible. In fact, those food shortages will eventually turn into famine. The Bible tells us that the day is coming when it will take a day's wages to buy one loaf of bread. Did you know that's in the book of Revelation? Now, people say, oh, I hope we're in the land time. I hope Jesus comes back in my lifetime. Well, if he does, get ready, because you're going to see an awful lot of stuff happen first. You are going to see an awful lot happen. The greatest tribulation the world has ever seen is going to occur. And that begins shortly after they rebuild the temple, and the Jews are talking about rebuilding it now. I mean, today they're talking about it in Israel. So every indication points to the possibility that you and I are living in the last days. I mean, everything points to that, that you and I are living in the last days. And if we are, what are you doing to get ready? What, what are you doing right now? If they build that temple, and they could build it any time, in fact, as I'm doing this program, just uh, weeks ago, they were petitioning the Prime Minister of Israel to let them offer up their first sacrifice. Oh, yeah. After 19 centuries, they're ready now to start offering up animal sacrifices. And folks, when they do, Jesus Christ will be back on this earth in about eight years. 
He's going to be standing on this earth, and if you're a Christian, you'll be with him. Now, if you knew for a fact that Christ would be standing on this earth in the next eight or nine years, what would you be doing today? How would you live your life differently? Now, in Mark 11, let me get back to what I was going to say here on this program. In Mark chapter 11, verse 22, the King James says, Have faith in God. I've read that in the Greek. It actually says, Have the faith of God. That's perfect faith. And then he explains what he means by this. For verily I say to you that whoever shall say to a mountain, to this mountain, in fact, he was talking about a literal mountain because he pointed right to it apparently. He said, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, an actual mountain of rock, be removed and be cast into the sea. And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He'll have whatever he says. That's God's promise. And you can have that, that promise if you will exercise faith. The Greek says in verse 22, not have faith in God. It says have the faith of God. That means total, absolute assurance. And if you live that kind of a life, you're going to please God. Hebrews 11.6 says without faith you can't please God. Verse 24, Therefore I say to you, what things soever you desire. Now the word desire here in Greek can be translated, whatever therefore you ask. And they translate it here as desire. Most of the places it's translated ask. So you could translate it this way. Therefore I say to you, what things soever you're asking for. When you pray, not after you see the manifestation, but when you pray, believe you receive and you shall have them. How about that? Now that's God's word and that's God's promise. And he wants to bless you. If you're sick, he wants to heal you. And if you're healthy, he wants you to stay in health. The Bible is God's will. It's his will on paper. And in 3 John and verse 2, it says, this is God speaking to us. I know John wrote it, but this is God's word, not John's word or Paul's word or Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, and, and Jude, and Peter, and whoever else. No, no, this is the word of God to you. He said, I would that you prosper and be in health. It's not God's word for you to get the coronavirus or some kind of a horrible flu or some other pestilence going around. It's God's will for you to be healthy. And if you are healthy, it's God's word for you to stay healthy. Now, that's his will. He wants you to. Now, let me explain this to you. Mark 11, uh, 24 says, whatever you ask you, it, it's God's will for you to receive. It is. Matthew 7, 7, Jesus said, ask and you'll receive. And verse 8 says, for whosoever asks, receives. And yet you say, wait a minute. Now, you mean I could ask God to let me win the lottery and he'd let me win the lottery? In James chapter 1, verses 5 through 7, it says, Anything you ask for, and he, he says anything, starts off with wisdom at verse 7, he ends up with anything. If you lack wisdom, ask of a God, and then he says anything, it's not just wisdom. And it shall be given him, but, and here's the kicker, here's the catch, but let him ask in faith, wavering, not wavering, nothing wavering, or the Greek says doubting nothing. For let not that man shall think he shall receive anything of the Lord. So yes, it's true that if you ask, you receive, but Jesus is talking to those who have faith. If you've got faith, you can ask for anything and you will get it. I asked God one time years ago, why are you so big on faith? God doesn't always talk to our heads or our ears and I've never heard his audible voice, but sometimes he speaks to our heart and just like that, just he plunked it right in my heart because when you show faith, you're demonstrating your love. You can't say you love God and don't believe what he says. That's true. How can you say that you love your husband? Ain't don't believe a word he says. Or man, how can you tell your wife that you, you love her? That you don't, you don't believe a word she says. You see what I'm saying? If you say to God, I love you with all my heart and soul, mind and strength, and you don't believe him, then that's not showing love. You know, I don't know about women, but men interpret love as esteem and respect. So, ladies, you can tell your husband all day long that you love him, but if he doesn't feel you respect him, it's not communicated. I think that women interpret love, and they, maybe there's several different ways. You ladies can write me a letter or call me and tell me what you think, but I think they interpret love as affection. Uh, probably other ways, too, but maybe that's the main way, through affection. So a man can say he loves her all he wants to, but, but you know if he never even gives her a hug, maybe she doesn't believe a word he says. Well, God doesn't just hear you tell him that you love him. He wants to see that you trust him and that you have faith in him. You might say that's God's love language. That's part of his love language. You've probably heard of the five love languages. 
And uh, there's something like five basic love languages, and everybody has at least one major love language. In, uh, of the five, uh, and all five of them were good for me, but the number one was quality time. And uh, maybe that's yours, or maybe yours is uh, affirm, uh, what is it, words of affirmation or uh, uh, gifts and that type of thing, or maybe yours is acts of service. Whatever it might be, but you can get, uh, and I don't have the books, so don't ask me for it, uh, it was who, who wrote that book? Um, Cha Chapman, Gary Chapman, I believe was his name. It's called The Five Love Languages. You can get it from your Christian bookstore. But uh, I advise uh, people who are getting married to read that book, that each of them read it before they get married. And, that, and, and then, then they should learn what the other person's love language is and make sure when they say, I love you, they say it in their love language so they understand it. Well, God's love language is having faith in Him and also obeying Him. The Bible says, for this is love that we keep His commandments. That's in 2 John verse 6. God interprets love as obedience. He interprets love as obedience. And a part of that is having faith in what He says. If you don't have faith, you're not pleasing God. Now here's this article, Faith and Healing, and we'd like to get it to you. And um, right now at this time when people are, are scared and scared of their health and whatever, uh, scared for their health and, and people are dying, you ought to read Psalm 91. It says, A thousand falls at your left hand, ten thousand die at your right hand, but it won't come nigh thee. It won't come near you if you will maintain your faith. Now you say, well, how do I get faith? I don't understand what it is and how it is. I mean, I've heard people talk about it, but how do you get it? Well, get this article. It's Lesson 13 of our Systematic Theology course called Prove All Things. And just, I know I've given you a lot of words there, but just ask for the one, Faith and Healing. Just ask for that one, Faith and Healing. And we'll get this to you. Because this is a very important time for you. You want to stay healthy. You don't want to die because you start being in fear. Remember what I told you that Revelation 21 verse 8 said? That all those who are fearful and unbelieving will have their part in the lake of fire? What is the opposite of fear? It's faith. The opposite of fear is faith. Fear means you're meditating on the lies of the devil. Faith means you're meditating on the promises of God. And when God says you can have what you say, Mark eleven twenty three. 23, then I'm going to say, I'm healthy and I'm not getting this thing. I am not going to get the coronavirus. I'm not going to get the flu. I, I've been telling my students that for years, and I'm not going to get the flu. Now, I, I've had this or that or the other thing, but I don't get the flu. I used to get it religiously, if I can use that word, every year. Every year. I mean, in my 20s, I got it all the time. Maybe all the way back to my teens, but I'd always get it. But then I realized, well, if God says I'm healed by His stripes, 1 Peter 2, 24, then why don't I just stay healed? Today I don't have the flu. I don't think I'll get it. Thank you very much. I'm not going to get it. And, and you say, well, that's being conceited, and you're bragging. No, no. Jesus said, if you tell the mountain to move and you believe that what you say comes to pass, you'll have that or anything whatsoever, not just mountains, whatsoever. Well, my whatsoever is I'm not getting this virus or the flu or whatever, and I'm going to stay healthy. Think about that. Well, I'm out of time today. Here's the telephone number to call if you'd like to get this article on faith and healing. And by the way, we're accepting applications to come to Ambassador Christian College. We're offering a humongous partial scholarship to those who enroll early, why don't you pick up the phone and say, hey, send me some information, or just give me your telephone number and I'll call you back. You'll probably get me to call you back. I'm out of time. Let me give you this telephone number one more time. It's 704, area code. If you want to get this article, just say, send me the one on faith. I'll know what you mean. 704-938-6415. One more time, the area, the, uh, area code is 704 for this article on faith. The number is 938-6415. Spell out your street address. Please spell it out. And also make sure we have your name and zip code. Until next time, this has been Keith Slough from Ambassador Christian College.